the consequences and also the possibility of change. Uh, so I think that the populism that and the result of the Euro skepticism um, is like a building. There is a basement. So, and the basement could be uh, the economical crisis. Uh, we are now in another economical crisis because of the increase of prices, but we came from another eco uh, a crisis of uh, employment, the crisis of the extremely high prices of the, of the houses and, and so on. And there is a non-satisfaction with the with your our own situation. Uh, this um, situation can be also um, thinking in, in an economical, social, um, the the standard of living, uh, the possibilities that give you to study is uh, very wide. Uh, the traditional parties are not trustful. Or they don't, or we don't uh, feel that they solve our problems. Um, the 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 level of education, for example, in Spain, uh, because of the possibility of working uh, in the construction of buildings, uh, with the with the um, with the building bubble, uh, many people uh, stop to study because they can uh, work and have a very high salary without any uh, education. So we have a big uh, amount of people with very low education. And um, uh, mm, we don't go deep in the topics. We just read headlines. It's also a result of the uh, social media, this very, a short video that almost uh, give you the idea of uh, having uh, information, but really we don't know in the, in the details, the reasons of the uh, situation. Here I put the, the first page of, uh, of a book. I, I read this book when I was in the, in the high school and it's a, a book that explained uh, the situation of Germany uh, in the period in between the two world wars. Uh, and it's very interesting uh, because uh, it, they, they let us understood uh, why uh, Hitler uh, arrived to the, the power in, in Germany uh, after uh, um, and a, a democratic election. So uh, I hardly recommend you this this book because can allow us to understand what the, why the populism, uh, why the Euro skepticism uh, arrived to uh, uh, to the, the inside the democratic process arrived to the power. Uh, uh, I. I present you one of the very famous journalists in Spain is uh, Rosa Maria Calaf, is a, a journalist here in, in the, um, in the uh, left part, you can see her uh, when uh, she starts uh, in any uh, conflict. Uh, she, and uh, now she is retired and uh, she give very good information about the situation of our society. Uh, she has a, a sentence that I love the most. The society is not informed, is entertainment, is entertained. And that's true. Uh, we don't, we, we, we know the information, but very few information about the topics and we, uh, and it's very important the, the health of the journalism to have uh, a very uh, uh, strong democratic values. So um, it's something that uh, allow us to, to know if uh, it's like the pulse of a society. And 
uh, there is no the 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 journalism must be uh, must have a social commitment and have a quality and freedom. So if they don't have freedom, they cannot defend the freedom. So I present you her in the presentation. As you know, I'm a journalist. So I, I think that it's important to, to have like reference and uh, people that now as uh, she is now retired that can say whatever they want because they, they are not paid by any power or any political party. Uh, in the middle, a stage uh, uh, we 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 see new discourses telling all messages uh, in spain now we have the left party uh, called the extremist left party called box who is all the time remembering sentences of the period of the dictatorship like the like if uh, if this was a very positive moment in the history of spain and like a uh, is similar to the headline of uh, Trump with make uh, America big again. So it's something similar. Uh, as the, the general public is simple mind, so our messages as the winner. A sentence that they cover all worlds, rancid information like male chauvinism, sexism, migrants are dangerous. So are like a a division between what is good, what is uh, bad, uh, black and white. Uh, so it's this extremist, the messages. Um, uh, always they, are, they have an enemy. They can be migrants, feminists, people in need, nationalists, regionalists, Muslims, whatever. They, but it's, but you, if you are in the good uh, position, you have a, a, an enemy that sometimes is, uh, they have like a def, uh, something that you can um, uh, make like a general. It's a, they don't give a, the, deep information, it's like a headlines. Um, even now, the climate change is being used as a politi uh, at the political level. So, uh, now with this uh, uh, need of con control the cost in energy because our uh, situation of the increase on prices uh, is in the political table as uh, something that is defended and the, by the 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 left and the the right parties are against this uh, saving of money. Uh, and they they are in some occasions denying the, the the climate change. And in Spain this year, for example, we have a, like a, um, ten a heat waves. That is not normal. Uh, we are a Mediterranean country, but in any case, it was extremely hot even in the mountains where I'm living. And we have so many fires in the forest that increase also the, uh, the degrees and increase the amount of um, carbon print in the atmosphere. Uh, funny messages are more popular than inform, inform, uh, crucial information. And there is always a fight or with me or against me that make the, uh, the reality easy to understand because they make simple what is very complex. Uh, I put in this slide also um, the, the pleasure for, for the previous time. Here I put this uh, film called Rebecca from Alfred Hiscott and it and has been done a remake or also Dune. Even Stranger Things is talking us about the 80s with all this uh, fashion, with uh, uh, light colors and the, the, the higher style. So uh, we have this um, um, pleasure for previous time, like a better moment, maybe for explaining stories or better moment for um, uh, selling products also because uh, the people in the 40s are 
with a better, uh, more money in the pockets. And also this, uh, the, 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 this other um, TV series with the women in, in red, uh, oh, sorry, I don't, have, I don't remember the name in, in English. Uh, uh, they, th this, this topic, um, this um, situation so extreme also uh, make people to 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 be more uh, more be less innovative, be more thinking in the past and not looking to the future. So the roof of this building can be the solution. And as uh, yesterday, our partners from Italy remember is the education and more values um, at public and private level, more example, more people uh, being what they are telling that must be done, a uh, critical spirit, making reflection, uh, is listening more uh, discourse, not just what are telling me that is true, that is okay. No, we must go also to listen what is against our, uh, uh, our ideas, to be more open mind, be more patient. We are in a, um, in a moment of everything is very quick. In 20 seconds, I have all the information. I can post, I can read in Instagram, I can watch a, a reels and I know everything. And that is not true. Uh, real separation of the three powers, we see that the co commission is, um, is like uh, um, talking very seriously and thinking about making a fine to Spain, uh, po uh, Poland and Hungary because of this. Uh, more Platon and less Prozac. Maybe you know this, uh, this uh, book. So uh, more, more philo philosophy, more information, more deep knowledge about the topics. Uh, uh, more critic. A civil servant and less friends of the politicians to, to be more critic, to, to have more uh, options, uh, more moral values, a long-term vision, uh, and thinking about the common benefit, uh, going mo more on journey. That uh, was one of the sentences also the Rosa Maria Calaf, the, the journalist. Uh, she always has a uh, two, two suitcases in front of the door of uh, her house, being ready for going to, to uh, a conflict or going to uh, 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 a, a quick cover or of some political event, uh, plural education, more internship in other countries like Erasmus or uh, um, uh, making interchange between companies, um, mm, uh, more control uh, in the in the um, in in the course that we are doing. I think that with next generation uh, funds, uh, we we will allow uh, other civil servants to realize uh, how difficult, uh, how many controls we have for all these. Um, all these subsidies and uh, it's, in, um, it's important to, to make a more plural society and of course in the basement of this uh, solution is the education. So thank you very much and if there is some question I'm here. Thanks, Laura. Very, very great presentation about the focus on um, the topic of uh, Euroscepticism. And thanks for the solution. That is a good reflection about uh, what we can do for uh, a better situation in the in next future of Europe. Thank you very much.
Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, now I'm trying to share the screen uh, here. Um, I'm Stylianos Zagarakis, uh, uh, and I am adjunct lecturer at the Department of Political Science of the University of Crete. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to express uh, some views, some opinions here about uh, populism and Euroscepticism. Um, and so also, um, I'll try to connect with all uh, that we have uh, heard before and uh, the great presentations. Uh, so I'll try to connect firstly, some, uh, um, some concepts that are uh, uh, in focus, populism, Euroscepticism and crisis. So the, the multiple crises and how uh, actually during these crises, uh, populists uh, can increase their influence and also Euroscepticism. Of course, this does not mean that um, during a period with, which is not a crisis period, there is no populism and Euroscepticism. But uh, during the crisis is an opportunity for the populists to increase their influence. So, um, this uh, this goes to uh, our just uh, uh, a brief outline of populism. First of all, uh, there is not an ex broadly accepted definition in the scientific community about populism. What is exactly populism? We know that there are some characteristics. For example, um, uh, the the ideology of these parties acquire a superficial character. There is a gap of uh, substantiative uh, practical content with uh, tension to simplification and also a focus on references to people as an intermediate set which is opposite to the elites and the status quo. So which is the main objective is to create uh, external and internal enemies who are against the people and um, actually the populists became the defenders of the people. Um, so what they do actually they, they uh, enhance uh, criticism on the political establishment as a total entity about on, on the EU and on the traditional parties. And they uh, promote an alternative political direction by appearing as the representatives of the people as a unified entity. So they are anti-elite, they are anti-establishment and they are also radical. Um, so they create this enemy friend dipole, which is external and, and internal and also there is an ambiguity of the real content and the vague uh, nature of the transition from theoretical promises to uh, political practice. Um, actually, populists uh, attract those who are facing um, problems uh, for, uh, of uh, labor market integration and they suffer socioeconomically. We saw that during the financial crisis, especially in countries uh, uh, such as Greece, such as Spain, uh, Italy, which uh, had also high percentages of unemployment. Uh, and uh, also the criticism of the populace to the supranational institutions, um, well, actually accused them, for example, the, the EU, for implementing undemocratic methods uh, that reduced the level of national sovereignty. So this is the issue of the democratic deficit. So the populists appear then some as, as uh, protectors of political uh, institutions um, and uh, they has rhetoric against uh, enemies. They create um, divisions, uh, specific divisions. Uh, and actually these divisions are inconsistent with the aim of strengthening democracy and social uh, unity. So how your skepticism is connected to populism well, actually, it existed before, and this is uh, a criticism actually to the EU integration, but your skepticism uh, poses a significant opposition to further integration. And the global financial crisis, the Eurozone crisis, uh, the enlarge, enlarge, enlargements, the migration crisis, and the failure of the EU to act as fast and uh, uh, united in several uh, crucial circumstances, exacerbated Euroscepticism. So populists used Euroscepticism as a tool to attract disappointed and affected by the crisis people. Uh, and this, they did that by presenting the EU as the establishment, 
which is opposed to the people. So here there is a failure to communicate properly the EU's values. Um, since increasing knowledge is associated with increasing support. Um, so this is used by populists in order to cr uh, criticize the EU and put EU in the enemy uh, uh, side. So uh, the question is, is criticism to the EU a negative process? No. But if it is used by populists, it can distract people from the real sources of the problems they face, while it limits uh, productive criticism and viable, uh, viable proposals. So these are some crises of these last uh, years, which has actually used um, by populists as um, specific uh, opportunities to increase uh, their um, criticism to the EU and to the political establishment. And we can see that you, during the crisis, because several problems, social problems uh, uh, increase, then the trust to the institutions um, uh, decreases. We can see here, for example, the poverty and social inclusion, exclusion rates and unemployment rates, which was increased during the crisis. Uh, and at the same time, there was a decrease in trust in specific uh, European institutions. For example, here uh, we have the uh, EU, the European Parliament, the European Commission, and the European Central uh, Bank. This is from a study that we are working on in the University of Crete. And uh, we do here the same thing with the Gini coefficient, which is about the uh, inequality, the income inequality, about the needs, the young people not in education, employment, and training, uh, which are aged um, 16 to 24 years old. And again, we can see that when the problems, the social problems, problems increase, the trust in the institution decreases. So now what EU we want actually to be more effective on, on um, the issues uh, uh, it faces and also to, pro to uh, promote the human rights and the social welfare of the people. Uh, a very, very important issue is uh, the information to the people. I teach in the university and I can see that the young people, and not only young people, and other people, we have um, uh, participated in seminars to teachers in the uh, secondary uh, schools, and they, they don't know exactly how the EU works and what is uh, the role of the EU, and in which space it can um, actually produce policies. So um, this is very important, the information of the people. So here we have opinion polls, for example, Eurobarometer and other surveys uh, assessing the results of referendums on treaty ratification or on questions of staying or leaving the EU that highlight an underlying Euroscepticism due to the lack of information of the European citizens by the EU institutions. Uh, so uh, actually also the strategy which is promoted by politicians and governments in member states, in specific uh, member states especially, um, in order to gain specific electoral uh, results uh, and they use populism to do that. And also the overconfidence they have in citizens' consensus do not provide the adequate and necessary information on the positive multidimensional effects of the EU. So here there is a lack of general knowledge about the aims, about the institutions, uh, about how the EU functions, about the process of the Europeanization, uh, which actually exacerbate this sense of democratic deficit of the EU and the skepticism towards its role and consequences. Because sometimes they don't know exactly what it is, in, in, in which level uh, the, the EU could be in, uh, involved in, in, in the policy implementation, for example. So information is very, very important for the people to understand the role of the EU. Because sometimes they, are, they can be easily attracted by easy populist uh, opinions uh, that, 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 that simplify everything uh, there. So that's why we uh, actually emphasize on that and on uh, addressing the uh, uh, social problems, which are very, very important. And we see that when social problems increase, the trust in the institution decreases. So these are connected 
uh, that there is a correlation there. So thank you very much for your attention. And thank if you, you have you. any questions, please, I'm here. Thank you to you for the presentation. Uh, very interesting your approach, uh, in particular uh, uh, about uh, what you said for the information, the importance of the information of a citizen, because uh, a citizen not know the European institution, the role, the function. So it is easy for populists to uh, attack the European Union and its policies. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Barcelo speaker, if you want to introduce yourself, please. Hello, good morning. My name is Rita Queiroz. I'm a worker from the Department of Culture in Municipality in Barcelos. I'm here with my colleague, Diana Gomes, and with the responsible of the Education Department to talk about the populism and eurosceptism in Portugal more. I'm going to introduce with a, a little reference to Portugal that joined to the European Union in 1986. It's one of the oldest nations in Europe and its genesis is in 1139, like you see in the, in, in the presentation. Portuguese is the official language in nine countries. Portugal is um, among the 50 largest economic, economies in the world and had positive growth prospects. Now I'm gonna make a little a presentation of Barcelos, the town uh, that we represent. is a city of the Northwest of Portugal, have 120,000 inhabitants, is recognized as the handicraft capital of Portugal, uh, is the town of the Gal Barcelos, that is the most famous icon of the Portuguese tourism, and have more than 800 years of history. All Council is uh, an image of all this unique cultural, historical, and natural heritage. Now, going to the, the purpose of this conference, uh, here we have a little reference to the notions of populism and eroceticism. Uh, that all of you have talked about. Can, uh, populism is a, a political ideas and activities that are intended to get the support of the ordinary people by giving them what they want. Eurosceptism is a political position involving criticism of the European Union and European integration. So passing to the causes that uh, make rise the populism and eroceptism in, 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 the, in the society. Uh, you can reference the US election and Brexit, uh, the election of Trump, Brexit, uh, and the 219 Euro European election evoke a new public and academic interest on populism. The war, the Ukrainian war, as well as other wars in the world, lead to less favorable idea of the European Union and its leadership. And also, the people are talking about mass media and social media. Is also new tools of mass and social media help populism actors exploit a more direct form of communication with the public. But the values and principles of UA are. The, the, the opposite of the populism, uh, social market economy, equality, rule of law, peace and freedom, and human dignity, democracy, these are our values. Uh, and to terminate the part of my presentation, I, I leave this sentence, sentence of Ursula von der Leyen, uh, what defines the Europeans, what we who Europe want from the Europeans. I want Europeans to build the future of the, our union. They should play a leading and activity part in setting our priorities and our level of ambition. Now my colleague, Diana Gomes, will talk about the position of Portuguese in the Eurosceptic. We will begin with, um, with a, a question. Is Portugal Eurosceptic? Um, in order to answer this question, we, we went to a survey made in 2021, last year, by um, the European Union, which says, um, do you think that Portugal membership of the UA 
is a good thing. Well, 76% of Portuguese says it's a good thing. 20% uh, says it's neither a good thing or not a bad thing. Only 2% says it's a bad thing, being all in below of Luxembourg. So in general, although there are politi politi political parties trying to raise the populism, we don't really feel eurosceptic at all, mainly because there are more positive aspects uh, than negative in the UA membership. Um, and so the Portuguese believe that their country's fate is tied to that of the European Union. The future is the European Union. The Portuguese bounced back quickly from a surge of Euroscepticism, as it says in a survey carried out ahead of the Portuguese national elections. And the Portuguese believe that the European Union is more than just an economic project, as it's also a place of unity and equality. And although uh, we don't feel very eurosceptic as um, feeling, we don't have that feeling of eurosepticism, um, there are still places to grow. So um, the state secretary of the European Affairs, Margarida March, says that uh, there are three big solutions, which is stability, the UA need to invest in their protection and in the promotion of a bigger stability peace and development, increase the protection of the common external borders, transform our neighborhood into an area of friendship and cooperation rather than an um, arena of instability. The second one is prosperity. Europe must, must be a promise of prosperity and success. We need sustainable economic growth and a new social consensus for Europe to achieve economical and social convergence. And the Europe of tomorrow. Europe will be nothing if the younger generations, generations no longer believe in it. These generations are the citizens, political leaders and entrepreneurs of tomorrow. If we want European values to be perpetuated, we need to focus and straighten our youth policies. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> we end here our presentation. And if uh, you have any questions, we are here. <laughs> Thank you for this presentation and for uh, explaining the situation in uh, Portugal. Thank you a lot. Uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Municipality of Scrad, please can you introduce yourself. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Um, hi, uh, hi to everyone once again. My name is uh, Nicolina and I'm coming from uh, the municipality of Scrat. Um, I'm really happy to have an opportunity to, uh, to be a part of this uh, seventh uh, European debate, even though in this uh, online way. So I will now uh, start with my uh, presentation. Can you see when I move the slides? Is, is it okay? Yes, uh, we see. If it's okay. possible to share your video, it's better. If not, it's going to work. Okay, I, I would prefer this way if, if it's not a problem. Um, okay, so uh, we have a definition of error skepticism uh, now, but uh, since we already have heard about uh, error skepticism, I think it is quite uh, clear uh, until now what, what is it. So I will just uh, skip this slide and I will uh, move to the, um, to the situation of the error skepticism in Croatia. I will talk a little bit more about the error skepticism in the beginning. So when the Croatia actually entered um, or in, uh, before the Croatia entered the European Union, uh, as you know, the Croatia was uh, 28 uh, member states. So the, the newest actually member. And I think it would be interesting to, to talk a bit about uh, the beginning. So um, at, the, at the very beginning, uh, I think the people actually did uh, did not know what what to think. I think they were mostly uh, afraid of the unknown. 
In this uh, slide, you can see some um, article headlines uh, in the newspapers of the Croatia before uh, a negotiation process started or when the negotiation process started. So the debates uh, at, at the beginning actually circled around statements such as um, that there is that there was no need that uh, Croatia became a part of the European Union as we already were a part of the euro or that uh, we actually Nicolina sorry yes? we see all the first slide oh you see only the first slide yeah oh uh, okay i don't know how to fix the problem but i will try it's okay maybe someone can help me uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's okay now it's the the deal. Oh, now it's okay yes okay sorry okay tell me if if it stops okay uh so at the beginning there were a lot of fears uh, about um about entering the the european union about something unknown you know uh, people were afraid of uh, all sort of things of uh, prices going high of um, our national identity, that it will be lost, that we will be unable to keep our local production. Uh, we also were afraid because we have just left one uh, union uh, and we left it uh, with a war when, when we actually lost a lot of lives. So the, the fears were, there were a lot of fears. Uh, there, is, there was also a lot of skepticism and uh, the skepticism was growing as the negotiation process uh, for the entrance of European Union uh, for, uh, get it furthermore. So in Croatia, um, uh, the cost of integration process and uh, actually demands of uh, political conditionally, in particular fa facing the past, the war crimes and uh, passing to uh, also the removal of immunity for its former prime minister, Ivo Sanader, who actually opened uh, Croatia to the EU integration process uh, have uh, actually altogether affected uh, Croatian attitudes over the European Union. And at, um, at that time, uh, so the time before the referendum about whether Croatia should join the European Union, public opinion about the uh, European Union was actually uh, quite low. It was the lowest uh, since 2000, uh, as you can, I hope, see on the graph. Um, so. Um, the situation was quite bad and then the campaign uh, as you can see for a referendum on croatia uh, entering uh, european union started it officially started on 3rd uh, of january 2012 um, it has uh, aims um, uh, to, pro to provide uh, croatian citizens clear concise and transparent information of the european union assassin uh, accession and uh, european union membership so it included uh, all kinds of stuff like uh, television, TV promotions, um, uh, telephone information, hotline was set up, and over 2 million of uh, EU information booklets uh, were actually prepared for mailing to every household in the country. Altogether, it was announced that the campaign costed uh, about 4.8 million of kuna. So although the situation was quite, uh, quite unsure, uh, the political leaders uh, believed in the positive results of the referendum about Croatia assessing European Union. And um, they were uh, right because, as you can see on the graph, um, the results of the referendum, which took place uh, already 10 years ago on 22nd uh, of January 2012. Uh, so uh, the results were that 66% of uh, participants uh, voted in favor of joining, of Croatia joining the European Union. So um, that altogether uh, led to the, the Croatia joined the European Union on the 1st of July 2013, being uh, the, the last member state that joined the European Union. So after joining the European Union, expectations were actually quite high. Um, although we knew that European Union can't solve our problems, uh, but the opinion of the people was, was also that it is a good opportunity for uh, Croatian growth, that we cannot succeed uh, our, ourselves. So people started actually to also recognize more advantages like um, open borders, like um, 
easier economic development, um, uh, better cooperation, uh, usage of funds, opportunities for uh, young people to, to, I don't know, to study or to work abroad, uh, and all sorts of things. So a bigger percentage of people actually started to realize um, that Croatia entering the European Union would actually be a win-win situation for both sides. But uh, since the, the time passed by, um, worrying questions from the beginning actually uh, turned into the questions about what the European Union did for us and what it did not do for us. So uh, after that, uh, I can say that Euroscepticism uh, was built on the perception that the change that people expect, accepted uh, did not come or that it is coming uh, way too slow. Also, people thought that um, that the European Union did not transform the society in a way that citizens thought that it would, it would do. So the um, situation now uh, actually could be uh, better. If you, as you see on the, the graph on the screen, 40% uh, of Croatians actually see the membership in the European Union as a, as a bad thing. Um, we are on the very bottom of the, uh, the graph, I mean, on the uh, right line together with Italy, Czech Republic and the UK, uh, who in the meantime exited the European Union. These uh, dates are actually from 2019. Um, also on the next picture, you can also see how many people would vote uh, for Croatia to stay in the European Union. And we have a quite, I mean, we would stay in the European Union because we uh, have 50 two percent of people who would vote to stay, but it is a lot uh, less than European average, which is 68 percent. I would also like to shortly uh, refer to the last uh, European elections that were held on 2019. Um, this time, actually, more than 50 percent of uh, European citizens um, eligible to to vote took part in the elections, um, which is actually the highest turnout in 20 years and the first time since the first direct elections that uh, that turned out has uh, increased. In Croatia, we also had a higher number of voters, approximately about 5% more than on the last, last European Union's uh, elections. And what's important, uh, it is to say that we had a lot uh, more of young voters. Uh, in Croatia, almost 30% of citizens took part on, the, on these elections, uh, which is still a low, a low percentage regarding European Union average. But um, what's important is that uh, the numbers are growing and that the young people are involving more in, in these uh, elections. One uh, thing that I would also like to talk about a bit, it is uh, Croatia entering the Eurozone. Uh, as, as, you, as you know, as I already uh, actually said, that Croatia entered the European Union on 1st of July 2013. And next year, uh, 1st January 2023, is actually the date when Croatia will enter the Eurozone. It means that the Euro will become um, official, of course, currency of the Europe. And uh, Croatia Kuna, will, Kuna currency that we have right now will be consigned to history. And generally speaking, uh, the data here is not that bad because 60% uh, of people are actually in favor of adopting Euro. For us, th these are actually uh, really good numbers. And also, as you can see on the graphic, 55% of people that uh, they think that the uh, consequences uh, of adopting Euro will uh, be good. Also in this uh, another graphicon, we can um, we can see the opinions uh, uh, of people uh, about uh, uh, that they are actually concerned, quite concerned. The, the blue lines shows that they are quite concerned about abuse of rights setting during the chain, changeover. But personally, people are really um, ready, and they think that they will manage to adapt the replacement of the Croatian uh, kuna uh, by the error, as you can see on the first picture of the graphic. Uh, so these are um, actually uh, quite good information to us, and they show uh, that the confidence in the European Union is in general getting higher in Croatia. Um, okay, for the end, I would just like to emphasize the main uh, reasons 
for our Euro skepticism today in Croatia, which uh, are populism, lack of information, then a lack of knowledge about European Union possibilities for the members, for youth, for its citizens. Then also a big problem uh, are fake news and spread of misinformation. And also the situation we have now in the world, like a global economic crisis, Ukraine war, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, these are all things that are affecting on uh, people's minds and people actually they like to they uh, feel better if they put the blame on someone someone so they sometimes uh, put the blame on the European Union um, after all that I would still um, like to say that situation in Croatia is not uh, that bad regarding our skepticism because we uh, I think we don't really have a rough uh, hard our skeptics I think the people are actually more indifferent. They um, need to learn more about the, the European Union. We have to bring European Union closer to them and we have to engage them to be a part of European Union more. Um, and we also, we also talked about how we can reduce our skepticism. I especially uh, actually liked uh, Laura's presentation and her proposal of solutions in her presentation. Uh, so I will not go further in explaining the possible ways, but I will just emphasize that um, for reducing our skepticism, it is important to implement projects like this one. So um, within our ACTs project, I think that we have uh, done a lot of um, work on informing people, on debating with them about the European Union, about the opportunities that European Union can give to all of us. We uh, have done also a lot on informing the youth, helping the people to understand the European Union better, to understand the institutions of European Union better. And um, we, uh, we also aim at this project to bring people closer to European Union. So by doing that, I think we are doing a small, but uh, we are having a significant tool also to counter the error skepticism and to get a lot of people uh, to introduce the values of the Euro European Union to them. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Nicolina. Thank you for these uh, last speeches. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime, About welcome our, in Scrat. <laughs> our very last much. meeting. Now I think uh, we have to debate, all of us. Is that right? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Now you have to debate, all of us, no? Yes. If uh, you want some question or some uh, reflection, some... Who wants to speak? If anybody wants to speak. Hello, hi. I actually wish to ask, I'm Eva, I'm also from Narva. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, I'm going to show myself real quick i have to just figure out the technicality um hi so i have a question uh one of the delegations mentioned the fact that in order to you know lessen the um the year skepticism it is needed to implement better youth policies could you could you elaborate on that please i was just wondering as a fellow young person from norma who feels that the youth policies are not implemented in a way that they could be i was just wondering what's your outlook on it i think it was uh the one before croatia The question was from Russia. 
The question is actually for, just give me a moment. I will see with the program, the one before Croatia. The one before Croatia was uh, Portugal. Yes, yes, sorry. So the, the Portuguese delegate, delegate mentioned the importance of inclusive youth policies on the European level to, you know, to sustain the faith in Europe as a, you know, mean for um, this, Europe to uh, be alive in the heads. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, my name is Rita from the municipality of Parcelos. This was based in, in an opinion article, but I think the main question is more to involve the youth people in this type of debates that talks about Europe. To, to know more about the the strategy the 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 the, 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 the what is Europe what Europe is expecting from them and what they can expect from the Europe I think it's more in this in this uh, in this way to involve and the, the benefits of makes part of the way of uh, of European of Europe I think involve more the youth people in this uh, in this type of uh, of uh, of um, debates. debates but how, how do you see a municipality a local municipality could be of help with that so what kind of instruments what kind of bodies or any councillory bodies that could be created within that <inaudible> municipality <inaudible> be like advisory <inaudible> or i mean it, it, it is good to talk uh, about inclusion but what I are think the actual steps I think we can develop more uh, this type of debate. Uh, 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 us, uh, as a municipality, can devo- develop more this type of debates in the schools. With make a type of partnership with schools and go there uh, and involve them in, in this type of, uh, of debates. And involve the, 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 the youth associations in this type of project, European projects. I think is one of the main of the that we can work. For example, in Narva, the municipal schools have been recently, you know, stepping on the path of supporting young people attending the European Erasmus Plus projects. So, is that something that that you That's mean sure. by the European projects being? Um, uh, looked upon without a fringe in the schools. Is that is that what I understand? Yeah, your, um, the Erasmus is good for for them to 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 connect with other realities with other countries in Europe. But I think they need to know more about the Europe, how they work. I think it's not just know how other countries, in other countries, the people live, the people learn. I think they need to know more about the policy and the strategies, everything of the, the Europe. I think it's not so... And how the, 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 Euro, the, the political influence the, their lives. So, but I, yeah, if someone wants to, you know, get in and, and ask, please do so. I, I'm, just, I'm I, I totally agree with you. I think that the understanding of the procedures and the opinion and how the legislation works, what are the objectives and the aims of this legislation are crucial. But for example, in the sc- in, in schools in Estonia, as, as much as I am aware of the national curricula, the such in depth understanding of uh, Europe is not existent. So are we talking about, you know, amending the national uh, curricula? Are we talking about politicians being more pro-European? I am pretty sure that most local politicians, if they were told to actively support um, European principles or outlooks publicly, this request would be received in a slightly less than neutral way from the side of the politicians. So my point being, if we cannot, you know, nationally amend the curricula and make the schools teach the processes uh, in the European Union, Mm -hmm. the legislative processes, it's the attitude education that we can promote. At the same time, certain cultural backgrounds, certain cultural values might be hindering this in, for example, in my region. So how do you see local municipalities being pr- more pro-European? Sorry if, t- if it's too general of a question, but like if we're taking the attitude education, is there something we could 
share with the municipality workers or the politicians that would make them be eager to actually promote uh, the pro-European education. E nesses currículos, estes currículos, nós podemos desenvolver um conjunto de ações muito mais a divulgação do que a minha Ok. Um, here in the, in, in the education, here in Barcelos, we have a lot of uh, strategies, uh, extracurricular, extra not really in, in the school, but ex extra. And we can develop in this extracurricular disciplines, this type of, uh, of strategies to talk about more about the political, the, of European, uh, invite. invite politicals to talk about that. It, that is one of the strategies that we, we are looking to, 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 to take here in our schools. Not I don't, in the curriculum, but not in the, in the curriculum, but extracurricular. Uh, uh, and inside of the curriculum, we have a, a, a discipline that is citadeny, citizen, citizen, citizens and citizenship and ship. And in, in this discipline, they abort something like that, something, but not so so funny. They don't go to the the to the discern of the question, you know, it's more general. But we have something. But in the extracurricular, we try to work more the same. Yeah, last part of this question, I'm not going to be bothering you for more. Do I don't think more, yeah. more anyone wants to respond to you other, yeah, other sure. countries. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there are eight of us just, here, just, so. a, just a, just a, I think that the role of the municipality is very important because it's an institutional role. Um, and uh, um, the municipality can help citizen young to meet Europe because uh, uh, political have their idea. So when they speak about Europe, about the European institution, speak with their idea. The municipality can be a um, neutral uh, uh, institution, no? So I think it's important uh, uh, to improve uh, this uh, activity at local level and to improve in the educational program the uh, knowledge, the presence, the, uh, uh, the European institution in an official way, okay? Yeah, thank you so much. I, I do agree with you on the neutrality of the municipality as compared to, you know, neutrality of the council or, or, or the, um, you know, the body that, that decides on the matters. Uh, do you understand correctly that maybe it could be facilitated or fostered by more cooperation between the city and the NGOs that deal with civic, civic engagement and civic education? So that they could, you know, the, the, uh, in Narva, for example, there are uh, a couple of um, NGOs that deal with uh, engagement of youth and in, in the civil education field, etc. So, do you think that a more comprehensive cooperation between municipality being the neutral pro-European um, body could foster for this attitude education amongst youth that is in addition to the um, education generally. I'm sorry, we don't really understand yeah. um, the municipality cooperation with who? I'm sorry? With NGOs, like non-governmental organizations, the non-profit organizations oh, that yes. deal with civic education. Oh, yes. oh okay. sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, Yes. Uh, in Barcelona, we don't have really that reality of ONGs. Yeah. Um, all we have is um, Association, associations, corporations. corporations, and um, that those types of associations are invited to talk to the schools and in that extracurricular uh, classes. And that's how we involve we this. evolve the, the youth with the, the this type of policies of Europe policies. That's very, very valuable input. Thank you so much. 
The, the NGO okay. is, uh, uh, have a, an important role the, by DINK, but uh, there are a lot of NGO that work on European value, European policies. Uh, just some suggestion uh, that uh, uh, work to organize meeting with the school, with the citizens about the European policies. But uh, um, really, they dig to the program, the financing program, not the value. It is important to stress the European value the, uh, to, uh, to uh, help citizens to understand the role of European institution, European Parliament, European Commission, what is the level that they can work because the European Commission not have um, competence in uh, each uh, field, but just in some field, but citizen, normal citizen, not to know this. For uh, this is one of the causes of uh, Euroscepticism, I think. I, I read that the mayor of uh, Victoria wants to say some things to us. Victoria? Victoria, hello. Mulțumesc tuturor pentru prezență și pentru faptul că am putut uh, finaliza această întâlnire din cadrul proiectului aici la Victoria. Uh, Rândul tuturor uh, drum bun spre casă mâine și uh, la viitoarea întâlnire. Estonia. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here, for coming to Victoria, for being part of our project, uh, for attending uh, today's meeting. And uh, I wish you to have a nice, pleasant traveling back home tomorrow. Thank you. Session ended today. Thank you to all for uh, the participation and for your contribution. I hope to meet you all in uh, Narva in uh, next uh, month. And uh, see you all. Have a nice day. Thank you to Victoria for the organization of this meeting. Thank you, thank you to Daniel, to the mayor. Thank you to the friend from Kistelec to be in Victoria. And uh, thanks to all, and uh, thanks for uh, this uh, debate. And uh, see you again soon. We take in touch by mail. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you for the answers. Thank you. Have a good day, all. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.